Chapter One of Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ellie Cat. Tales of the Enchanted Islands of the Atlantic by Thomas Higginson. Chapter One The Story of Atlantis. The Greek sage Socrates, when he was but a boy minding his father's goats, used to lie on the grass under the myrtle trees, and while the goats grazed around him, he loved to read over and over the story which Solon, the lawgiver and poet, wrote down for the great-grandfather of Socrates, and which Solon had always meant to make into a poem, though he died without doing it. But this was briefly what he wrote in prose. I, Solon, was never in my life so surprised as when I went to Egypt for instruction in my youth, and there, in the temple of Sais, saw an aged priest who told me of the island of Atlantis, which was sunk in the sea thousands of years ago. He said that in the division of the earth the gods agreed that the god Poseidon, or Neptune, should have as his share this great island which then lay in the ocean west of the Mediterranean Sea, and was larger than all Asia. There was a mortal maiden there whom Poseidon wished to marry, and to secure her he surrounded the valley where she dwelt with three rings of sea and two of land, so that no one could enter, and he made underground springs with water hot or cold, and supplied all things needful to the life of man. Here he lived with her for many years, and they had ten sons and these sons divided the island among them and had many children, who dwelt there for more than a thousand years. They had mines of gold and silver, and pastures for elephants, and many fragrant plants. They erected palaces and dug canals, and they built their temples of white, red, and black stone, and covered them with gold and silver. In these were statues of gold, especially one of the god Poseidon driving six-winged horses. He was so large as to touch the roof with his head, and had a hundred water-nymphs around him riding on dolphins. The islanders had also baths and gardens and sea-walls, and they had twelve hundred ships and ten thousand chariots. All this was in the royal city alone, and the people were friendly and good and well affectioned towards all. But as time went on they grew less so, and they did not obey the laws, so that they offended heaven. In a single day and night the island disappeared and sank beneath the sea, and this is why the sea in that region grew so impassable and impenetrable, because there is a quantity of shallow mud in the way, and this was caused by the sinking of a single vast island. This is the tale, said Solon, which the old Egyptian priest told me, and Solon's tale was read by Socrates the boy as he lay in the grass and he told it to his friends after he grew up, as is written in his dialogues recorded by his disciple Plato. And though this great island of Atlantis has never been seen again, yet a great many smaller islands have been found in the Atlantic Ocean, and they have sometimes been lost to sight and found again. There is also in this ocean a vast tract of floating seaweed, called by sailors the Sargasso Sea, covering a region as large as France, and this has been thought by many to mark the place of a sunken island. There are also many islands, such as the Azores, which have been supposed at different times to be fragments of Atlantis, and besides all these the remains of the vanished island have been looked for in all parts of the world. Some writers have thought it was in Sweden, others in Spitsbergen, others in Africa, in Palestine, in America. Since the depth of the Atlantic has been more thoroughly sounded, a few writers have maintained that the inequalities of its floor show some traces of the submerged Atlantis. But the general opinion of men of science is quite the other way. The visible Atlantic islands are all, or almost all, they say, of volcanic origin, and though there are ridges in the bottom of the ocean, they do not connect the continents. At any rate, this was the original story of Atlantis, and the legends which follow in these pages have doubtless all grown, more or less, out of this first tale which Socrates told. End of chapter 1
Recording by Ellie Cat.